Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, or, or uh, if it's your first time viewing one of my videos then welcome. Um, just recently I've been doing lots of model builds, model kits, tanks, and um, I was in a bit of a, um, in, the, in the flow of it, and I didn't want to break off and do a diorama. Um, so I've got a kind of backlog of kits that don't have bases to sit on but it's a different kind of um, creativity I think you need to you know to build something from scratch uh, using different materials like plaster polystyrene that make quite a mess um, so I use it so I do it on the same desk and um, I was just enjoying having a clean desk really and making model kits and being organized and clean um, well, no, I give in. I've got uh, one of my recent videos was uh, all the projects that I had saved up and backed up, and um, one of them's been on my mind for the last couple of weeks since I made that video, and this is going to be the trench uh, with building ruins um, to go with a box set uh, of figures, um, master box British infantry from the Somme battle period uh, five five lovely figures really nice figures um, so first of all I had some of the uh, high density foam um, that you can carve I've made building ruins out of this before and it's quite nice and, it, and the paint the paint sits on it quite nice as well and um, the texture uh, when it's not cut is is not uh, dappled like the um, polystyrene <coughs> or ex is it called extruded foam um, it's um, it's a very flat surface so uh, straight away you've got a you know a more realistic um, paint surface like wall so I just um, just cut a doorway out it's a church it's going to be the entrance to a church uh, there's a famous painting and there's lots of photographs where British soldiers are in trenches and the trenches are intersecting the foundations of buildings going through villages in Belgium and France in the First World War and there is a painting of a church steeple that's kind of sitting above the um, trench network and that was my inspiration, really. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I'd seen a couple of pictures, and this, this I'm not copying um, one picture of a building, but I'd researched about ten pictures, and this was an amalgamation of them and an idea which had formed in my mind. So, you know, as you can see there... Um, I tidy up the um, cuts, especially the circular window in the front of the church. I tidy it up by using a can of hairspray, which is obviously on my model table anyway. Um, uh, just, to, just to give a, a perfect circular um, window, because freehand cutting is, is not, um, not always the best. You know, could have got a drill bit, um, could have got a jigsaw, um, but I'm kind of low tech when I'm doing my uh, dioramas. Too low tech, probably, but uh, yeah, just just do what I just did. Find something um, of a of a, the rough diameter and um, just roll it around in the space, and it'll it should smooth it off. If you're using the same kind of form as I'm using. If you were using the less dense foam, then it would just flake away. But um, I'm going to keep this. This is the size uh, that this foam comes comes in from, e from eBay. I think I bought a pack of five. And in the past, I bought the same, the same kind of pack from Amazon. Gosh, it was about five or six pounds. Um, maybe a bit less. And um, 
you, you know you could you could do the surface uh, of the um the actual ground surface of your diorama with this foam i'm sure you could get all kinds of textures with it maybe you could heat it um but for me for that expense uh, i use the the typical packaging polystyrene for the surface i'd rather use that for the surface uh, and plaster and then this allows some detailed um, carving and i use and i saw so i reserve this for buildings I'd have probably carried on guys just making, just doing model kits because I still have a lot backed up. Um, but a few people have left comments saying, you know, get, getting back to the dioramas, when are you getting back to the dioramas? Looking forward to the dioramas for this model. And um, yeah, I suppose unless it's a, a rarer kit without a YouTube, without much... Um, without many videos showing you how to complete them um, I suppose dioramas is the most creative the most creative thing to get inspiration for in this in this hobby um, the, the models kind of build themselves um, I don't struggle for the ideas for the inspiration for these Certainly not, but uh, sometimes it's the translating the uh, idea that you've had into into something that looks similar, something that you're happy with. So when I bought the blue foam, I bought some balsa sheets as well. They were only cheap. They were three pound, three or four pound for six. Or, or eight sheets of, of balsa that were A4 sized and uh, yeah I used it for the first time uh, just to make slightly more detailed parts on the architecture of the church that would have been harder to carve Staples to have on your desk, sandpaper, really sharp uh, craft knife. You should be able to buy packs of disposable craft knives, you know, four or five at a time. Um, or if you can find uh, a really decent one with replaceable blades, uh, but I've, uh, I've, I've not yet found... Uh, I've not yet found that. I always buy one one with replaceable blades and then when I've used up the blades that came in the pack, um, I can never find new blades again. Or put it together as tightly as it was put together before I started loosening it off to take the old blade out. This is a real cheap way to get into the diorama um, making because really all you, need, all you need to buy is a couple of figures, a couple of First World War figures, and there's loads of sets available, Tamiya, uh, Masterbox, Mini Art, and um, you could do figures and uh, a field gun, a howitzer, you don't have to buy any tanks and the First World War is obviously a really distinctive uh, landscape and it's quite interesting uh, and enjoyable to, to make. I love making the trenches. Just some polystyrene left over from when I had a fridge delivered, I think. And um, so it's thick, it's about an inch thick. It's thicker than um, some of the pieces. You can get pieces of different thickness. But um, as you can see, I've drawn on the floorboard there 
the, the rough shape that I wanted. I wanted a junction between a kind of T-junction, um, two trenches joining, and a high point at the back corner uh, for the church, the church ruins to stand above the, the trench where the guys are talking. And, um, you know, I've roughly marked on there where the, where the chaps will be standing, where the model kit figures will be standing. But um, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I certainly wasn't tied to that. Um, the five figures are, are quite a nice, they're, they're really nice poses. There's an officer and four men. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with it, but uh, I've bought kits before. I think they were ICM. And they had lots and lots and lots of accessories that I didn't even need. Uh, they were the Anzac troops, 1915, like Gallipoli troops. And um, I had a whole sprue left over from that. Spades, helmets, um, rifles, wire cutters, uh, canteens, all sorts of stuff. So, I've, so I used that as well. The British infantry master box kit just comes with enough stuff for the for the figures um there's no alternative um weapons or anything like that really uh, there's just um five exact figures that you can complete and uh, nothing else really left on the sprue but but love really well sculpted lovely the faces on there uh, every every detail the mustache uh, on a couple of the soldiers, fantastic. So just having a bit of a smoother mud surface, so I've not put loads of coffee grounds into the plaster mix as I as I sometimes do, and um, I've used the picture frame stretcher. Um, pegs the, the the if you buy a canvas or sometimes a picture frame there's um wedges of balsa wood that you can hammer in to the back to stretch to stretch it out if it's lost tension and somebody um had given me some of those so i've used them as as um a retaining wall holding back the higher side of the trench. So you can see them, you can see them just there. Um, they, they were kind of cut at a diagonal on one side, so I had to straighten off the edges, but they were nice thick wedges of um, balsa. Um, so I thought either they were gonna be duck boards to raise the path out of the mud uh, or a retaining wall for the side of the trench. So I went with the retaining wall. There's all sorts of things you can buy for trench construction. Um, they often used corrugated um, steel, which I'm sure there's imitation versions from the different makers. Um, but you can use disposable coffee stirrers, which are kind of to, at this scale are like plank width um, just google search duck boards trench duck boards uh, to see the kind of um, the way the planks were laid across the bottom obviously there's usually a fire fire step in a deep trench there'll be a step running along the front wall of the trench where the men would stand to shoot over the edge um, there would be ladders barbed wire uh, and structures holding the barbed wire posts but um, I didn't want to take too much away from the fact I'm going to put building ruins on this I didn't want to have too much happening I had five interesting figures and then a, and then the front of a church um, so I've left off um, wire and uh, all the other details what I have done is made little blocks uh, breeze block kind of size 
stone blocks that have come off the church when it's been hit by a shell. Um, or it's been partially destroyed um, and I added them when the plaster was wet. And now I'm using just a cheap test pot of house paint. Uh, in the UK we call this emulsion, but just typical um, wall paint in your house. Uh, and I had this line round and it was like a cream colour. And you can daub it on and it, it doesn't crack. And it dries uh, matte so that you can paint over it really easily as well. Just, just consider your textures, consider... When you're putting the plaster on, it's still wet. Um, you could use your figures to press um, feet marks, uh, boot marks into the into the mud, into the plaster, uh, or just use a paintbrush to soften off um, if you want that effect, or um, even just use your finger and just m don't have flat smooth surfaces you know just rough up the surface so that it dries like mud i found a broken twig uh, on the street outside and um i've included that as like a <clears throat> the blown off stump of a tree Then I think I had uh, Vallejo chocolate brown uh, or black brown and I've um, mixed it with some sea grey and quite heavily diluted and um, I'm just doing a bit of a wash. Once I've done an undercoat and I've used plaster on a, on a surface I like to just do washes um, and let the colours build up uh, bit by bit. Um, leave comments guys and let me know what you think let me know if you watch these kind of diorama videos and try and imitate uh, the same kind of diorama or if you just watch them for little tips and tricks and material um, ideas how to use or if you just watch several and then come up with your own idea about uh, a, you know a diorama kind of structure um, there's so many different ways to approach uh, a trench with some figures in. Um, definitely look at obviously, you know, period photographs. Um, my my university days were spent studying uh, the First World War and trench warfare. So I almost don't have to look. You know, I've got uh, I've seen so many of these pictures. So the Masterbox kit doesn't come with any instructions. <clears throat> but it has a um, painting guide on the back and you can see the figures from the front and the back um, so, you, so you know how to assemble them um, they went together quite easily obviously the rifles need straps so if you've got any old photo etch sprues lying around uh, you can just use the, the strips after you've cut the actual photo etch parts out you can use the, the strips that are left <clears throat> um, to make your rifle uh, shoulder straps. And um, I've seen people use foil and all sorts of bits for that. But if you've been making models, you've probably got some, some odd, odds and ends of photo etch lying around. Um, I run out of super glue, so I even used PVA. Uh, on, on stuff like that, which wasn't a problem, it just needed longer to dry. All the soldiers are a Somme battle, so they all have the tin helmets. So there's no alternative caps. Um, <clears throat> but each of these figures, it's worth noting, had a complete head under the helmet. They didn't just have like a... Um, a uh, flat top to the figure so you could leave the helmets off 
Uh, they, I think they even had textured hair, some of them. And one of them had a, uh, a woolen hat as well, which the helmet sat on top of. So you can see there, guys, that I've uh, used some strips of photo etch um, along the balsa wedges, which are the retaining wall of the front of the trench. And um, I've put on, just to give the wood a bit more of a realistic kind of... Um, so it wasn't too uniform. I've put... Um, strips from the sprue of, a, of an old photo etch kit and I've rusted them up and I've linked the boards together um, like the iron brackets holding them the boards back and um, yeah it just gives some interest to the to the wood effect I've used uh, some clear PVA that I bought quite a while ago that doesn't um, adhere very well to things. As a, as a PVA, it's not very useful, but it dries uh, very glossy uh, and retains its kind of wet look. So I've drizzled some PVA into the actual bottom of the trench, the floor of the trench, and I'm just adding in some colour so that there's like dirty puddles. I've not glued, um, I've hot, a hot glue, I used my hot glue gun to stick the base polystyrene um, down, but then I've not glued any of the wood effect balsa strips, um, I just let the plaster um cement them in and they're very very strong um connection so i put all them on while the plaster was still wet and um the actual ruins of the church that you can see that was just um pva glue and i left it overnight i'd already marked on where the where the church would be standing just so that I didn't build up the ground too much, um, that it wouldn't sit uh, flat on it. So now using Vallejo mud mud effects, just to give a more realistic tone to the to the mud of the trench. You can see there that I've got that I have put um, just a couple of lines of sandbags on that far side. Uh, they're just made out of das. Uh, air drying clay sandbags are really simple just uh, roll out a kind of snake and then cut them all to equal size and just flatten them out with your fingers uh, until they're kind of pillow shaped um, you can go mad um, structurally you can go to town sandbags, planks corrugated metal you know have the whole trench wall uh, filled with materials but um, on this occasion I've just done mostly mud and um, one main wall of um, of these wooden boards Guys, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more, please uh, consider uh, clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you go two videos back, I do give a kind of breakdown of all the projects that are coming up in the in the future. I think I went into about ten different projects, um, so you'll be able to see what's coming up. And uh, since then, I've just done the Leopard one. Um, I've done the Leopard one, and I've got the Type 59 that both need dioramas as well. So I'm probably going to leave my desk a mess uh, for the time being. 
keep the plaster dust out, keep the polystyrene out and maybe go straight into doing another diorama. So in the past when I've done 135 figures um, I've uh, tried to paint them in stages. If you know my videos, because I brush paint everything, I try and do everything uh, systematically and in stages so that I don't um, finish a model and make it really difficult for myself to reach parts with a brush. Uh, but this time, um, because the British uniform is quite uh, homogenous, just, just a, a drab pale brown, I built the, them complete. Apart from the weapons, I left the weapons off, uh, but I built the men completely, put the heads on, put the helmets on. Um, the the, the colour of the uniform is not even that far from, from flesh colour really as well. Uh, so... All the tones are closely, closely matched. I'm not the best at painting on that on that scale. Um, I don't have the best brushes, and um, you know you'll see the you'll see them at the end. See what you think. Let me know what you think. But um, I don't get a kick out of tiny, 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 tiny detail. Um, I just wanted to achieve the the kind of look of the. The fabric and the textures and the boots and the dirt and um, you know I think I, I think I achieved something of that so I used the AK um, still water effect with some um, Vallejo uh, wood um, which is like a, a pale kind of sickly brown sandy brown uh, and I'm just going over again the PVA effect that I've that I've done. I don't think the wood it is on the on the screen there is the same um, as as the way it is in real life. Um, they look a bit orangey brown, them big panels, um, and in reality they're darker, uh, they're more muted, and the grain. I've done a black wash over them boards and the grain is, grain of the balsa has come up so I don't know why they look so orangey there but um, I use German black brown and um, black to do a wash on the uh, on the panels on the balsa panels that are forming the retaining wall <clears throat> I also did a black wash on the grey stone of the church as well so once the once i've put on such a big chunk of building obviously it's really difficult to to then film it um because of the the odd shape that the the whole thing assumes so i've got a couple of spades and i've got a couple of rifles that i mentioned were in a previous kit uh, Australian New Zealand soldiers um, so I'm just showing there that it's the British infantry <clears throat> five figures with an officer some battle period 1916 they've got leather, leather uh, vests on or jerkins the officer has a coat on um, when I saw this kit online my original idea was to do a wintry diorama with snow, snow effect. Um, but I think it was, I think I like the mud in the end. So I've left it as it is. There's a Lewis gunner, um, three riflemen, and, and a second lieutenant and officer. So while the AK still water is um, still wet, wet and sticky in the bottom of the trench, I'm using it to glue the actual soldiers into position.
But <clears throat> another thing that you could consider doing, um, if you are looking into trench diorama ideas, is obviously a walkway over the trench. Uh, as long as the two, uh, the parapet and the parados, are of equal height, um, you can do corrugated iron. Um, over the top of the trench like um, a curved half um, to form like a, a tunnel in the trench um, you could do a an officer's dugout in the side of the trench I've done that before um, and like I say most of them would have had a firing step but there are so many different styles that don't feel that you're tied to creating an authentic trench. Only, only one way. There's not only one way of doing it. There's loads of different kinds. The German ones were deeper <coughs> and more established than the British ones because the emphasis of the British Army was in moving forward. So they were only temporary. They were sometimes scruffy, sometimes just mud. And um, in some areas they they dug deep, and in some areas they just weren't able to, if if drainage was bad. So they'd they'd build up the parado the parapet with sandbags instead of digging deep. So it's it's just whatever suits whatever suits your materials that you've got. <clears throat> So you can see that I've just placed the five soldiers. I originally was planning the officer to speak to the two that were closest to him, but um, the plaster on the ground um, didn't made it difficult to place his feet. So I turn him towards uh, the other two soldiers that are in the side trench. There's a few water bottles, <clears throat> a couple of rifles and um, sandbags, a couple of planks of wood uh, and some rubble. But uh, I didn't want to get carried away with detail, guys, and uh, fill the surface with loads of stuff and fill the diorama with all the cliches of trench warfare, uh, ladders and things like that. So there you go. Let me know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, I'm quite pleased with the results. I really enjoyed this one. And if you want to see more detailed pictures, there'll be a few on my Instagram, which is Supermodel Dave. Thanks for watching, guys.